So today, we're on to section four. So don't forget as well that we have a short quiz tomorrow. It won't be long, about 10 minutes. What's it going to be on? It'll be on the identities. So all those identities that we learned, you're going to have to identify them. So there'll be some examples, and then you'll have to match which property goes with what example. And then we'll have some short addition and subtraction based on these first four sections of integers. So we'll be adding and subtracting positive numbers and negative numbers. It'll be all very similar to the sheets that I've given you out in the homework. So it won't be difficult as long as you know how to do that stuff. So it sounds like you're well, all well on your way since no one had any questions. All right. So today, so what we'll do as well, so tomorrow, we're going to go over this last section today because it'll be on the first four sections. So we're going to go over this today. And then tomorrow I'll go over the homework first before the quiz. So if you have any questions, tomorrow will be the time to ask before I pass out the quizzes. And then uh, we'll do the quiz after that. So after we've went over all the sections and I've answered any questions you have. So if you also have any other questions from sections one, two, or three, tomorrow you can ask those as well before we start. Okay? All right. So today is section four, subtracting real numbers. And we define subtraction in math as adding the opposite. So a minus b is really a plus the opposite of b. Well, let's put that, put a number out there and then show you how that works. So 7 minus 4. All that really is is 7 plus the opposite of 4, which you know is negative 4. Okay? And so once you set it up like that, then it's no different than yesterday's homework. Yeah, you're adding two numbers with different signs. So you take the larger, subtract the smaller. That gives you three. And use the sign of the larger number, so three. Now, you all know this from third grade, right? Seven minus four. So that is an easy example. And so in your mind, you're probably thinking, well, I'm not going to change that to plus minus four. I'm just going to put seven minus four as three. So I know you understand that. But then in algebra, we're just going to start to get into other things. We're going to get into variables. Excuse me? We're going to get into some variables and other things that uh, you're going to need to know what the signs are. So you're, that's why you're going to get into this, this practice when you're doing subtraction of changing the sign. So you want to turn subtraction into addition problems by adding the opposite. And the reason we're going to do that, again, is so we can solve algebra problems. So I understand you look at this and it's just three. Yeah. But we're going to get into some more difficult ones. So. All right. So, I've got some more examples of you. So if I have 9 and I subtract 12, that's really just 9 added to the opposite of 12, or 9 plus negative 12. Now again, from yesterday, the larger number is 12. So because we have different signs, we're going to subtract 12 minus 9 is 3. And I use the sign of the larger number, so the answer is negative 3. Here we have 3 minus negative 4. Well, no, not, notice now that we're going to, when we change it to the opposite, it, the negative 4 is just going to go to 4. So we have 3 plus the opposite of negative 4, which is 4. So 3 minus negative 4 is 7. This may not be as easily recognizable to you. See, the 4 minus 3 is easy for you to recognize because you've done that all through school. You may not immediately recognize that 3 minus negative 4 is just really 3 plus 4, which is 7. And again, we're adding the opposite. Wait, you got it? I don't know. Okay. Over here we have negative 6 minus negative 10. So we have negative 6 added to the opposite of negative 10, which is 10. Now we're just adding two numbers with different signs. The larger number is 10. Subtract the smaller number 6. Gives us 4 because we use the sign of the larger number, which is positive. So 4. All right. So how does this all work when we get to these variables, which is really where the tricky part comes in? So I have minus y minus, or subtract, subtracting, negative y plus 4. OK. So the first thing I have to do is I'm going to set it up as an addition problem. So when I'm, I'm taking this here, this negative y, and I'm subtracting that whole quantity. OK? So I'm going to change that to an addition problem. So it's really negative y plus the opposite of this quantity. So I have the opposite of negative y plus 4. Does everyone see how I set that up? If you're confused, raise your hand up. Okay. 
So now that I have this set up, we learned before the property of opposites, right? So we know that the opposite of any quantity is just the opposite of this plus the opposite of this. In other words, we know that the opposite of A plus B was one, the one of those identities we learned, the property of opposites, where we had negative A plus negative B. Okay? So when you have the opposite of the entire quantity, you just do the opposite of each individual item. Okay. So down here when we're doing this, we take the opposite of negative y, which is just y. And then we add that to the opposite of 4, which is negative 4. And so now that we have that all set up, now we're just adding three different things. Negative y, y, and negative 4. Well, any number, time, plus, any number <coughs> added to its opposite is going to give us 0. Okay, that's that additive property we talked about. So when we have negative y, we add it to its opposite, which is y. That's just 0. And the negative 4. So the, our whole answer to all of that is just negative 4. Okay. All right, let's do a couple of these uh, word problems because you're going to get these. So we'll start with 15 decreased by negative 3. So we start with 15, and when we say decreased by, that word tells you subtraction. So we have 15 decreased by negative 3. So we're just going to set that up as 15 minus negative 3. And so then when we change it to an addition problem, it's just 15 plus the opposite of negative 3. The opposite of negative 3 is 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. Okay. I'm going to move this down a little so you can... The opposite of the difference between y and 7. Okay, so when it says the opposite, right away when it tells you the opposite, that's the minus sign, the negative sign. So that's, when it says the opposite here, that's going to tell you you've got this minus sign. Okay, so you start out with that. The opposite of the difference. Now when it tells you the difference, that's going to tell you subtraction. Okay, so you have the opposite of the difference, and then you just, what two things are you subtracting? Well, y and 7. Okay, so the opposite of y minus 7. Again, going back to the same property, anytime you have the opposite of a quantity, which is what you have here, the opposite of this quantity, it's just the opposite of the first one plus the opposite of the second one. The opposite of y is uh, negative y, and the opposite of, of I'm sorry, when you get here, I forgot a step. You're, because you're subtracting, we set that up as an addition problem. So you're adding the opposite of 7, which is negative 7. So that's how you got that. So then we're doing the opposite. The opposite of y is negative y. The opposite of negative 7 is 7. So that word problem just comes out to y, negative y, plus 7. Okay. So we'll see how this works, okay? All right. We'll start with Gianna, okay? How about 45 minus 18? Um, okay, so you get 45 plus what? Negative 18. Negative 18. And I know you weren't here yesterday, but when you, by the way, I don't know if you guys are all aware of this, because I think Ms. Navikas mentioned it in the beginning, but you may not realize now. Excuse me. It's the second time. Okay. Look at me. Okay, when, you're, when you guys are adding these together, um, oh, I, I was going to tell you. So when you, if you get confused or you're not here, uh, these videos go online. So if you, if you went online, you could go to the website, the same uh, website that has your homework, also has the extra credit on it. And uh, Linda, I'll have to explain the extra credit to you afterwards. Uh, so where you can do the extra credit for your test. And I would suggest that you can do some of that as you go, um, rather than waiting until the end of the test, as we do each section. And then there's a little video, so you can replay what we talked about during the day. So if you're still confused and you want to go back and you're doing the homework and you realize, well, maybe I thought I got it, but I didn't, you can always go back and look at the video. She also has other videos there um, from previous years. There's other things. There's other resources. There's all kinds of things on there. So take your time and, and avail yourself of that. Use those resources. Um, so I know you weren't here yesterday. but So basically, really simply, when you're, subtract, when you're adding two numbers with different signs, you take the larger number. What's the larger number there, 45 or 18? 45. 45. You subtract the smaller number, which is the 18. And what's 45 minus 18? Well, 
Well, what's five? What's fifteen? Because you got to borrow. What's fifteen minus eight? Do you know what happened there? I have no idea. All of a sudden, you hit the, wait a minute, toe transfer. Oh my goodness, that's all right. You must have hit, yeah, it's a recalibrator. You can go. Don't worry, it's okay. Once it turns green, it's gone. Oh, what's, I got you. Look, look. What <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. 15 minus 8. 7. Seven. And then, so you borrow. So you can, 3 minus 1. 2. Okay. So 27. Then, <laughs> then after you subtract, you're going to use the sign of the bigger number. So 45 is larger. That's positive. So it's just positive 27. Now, again, this was what I was talking about before. In an easy example, you went through all this changing and all this just to give you the same thing that you started with. And this is what you've done all along, so it's 45 minus 18. So when you get those in the book, I understand you look at that and you just want to quickly do the subtraction and give you your answer. But they're just trying to get you in the habit of using that addition with the opposite. Okay. Let me just...